brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. And so now you got to decide, am I going to allow Jesus to be the third party in my marriage? Every successful marriage in the kingdom of God always has a third party. And that third party is Jesus. Uh, will I, those of you who are here, both you at home, will you, uh, will you allow Jesus to be the third party in your relationship? You can interact with Creflo Dollar Ministries anytime, anywhere. All of this is at your fingertips with our state-of-the-art custom-designed app. With the broadcast feature, you can access your favorite messages, sermon series, and more. Add events to your calendar, set reminders, get directions, share with friends, and even give securely through this platform. Visit creflodollarministries.org slash app or text app to 51555 today. This is your world. So let's vow to make it a better place. Let every heart that needs to know you love is here to stay. Ooh, it's time we live a new life. Let us love shine bright in you. We sing by His grace, so we embrace Your love today. submission is a response to biblical headship. Let me say that again, then I'll explain it. Biblical submission is a response to biblical headship. In other words, when the head, in other words, when the head is loving like that, when he is nourishing like that, the response that you will get from loving and nourishing and cherishing that woman, the response you will get is biblical submission. Want to submit. Biblical submission in every way because it's only responding to what's coming out of the faucet. It's only responding to what's coming out of the faucet. If the water is coming out of the faucet and it is clean and it is pure, my response, that response is going to be, I can drink it. But if the, if the stuff coming out the faucet is nasty and muddy and gritty and black, you drink the water, but you're going to spit it out. I'm not going to submit to swallow something like that. Biblical submission is a response to biblical headship and love and cherish. So you can't come to my office and complain about how bad your wife is. Because the first thing I'm going to think about is she's just responding to whatever is not coming from you. She responded to you, Herbert. I don't know where that name came from. <laughs> and, I, and, and forgive me if anybody on stream or anybody here named her, but, I, you know, I might, my name Creflo, so, I mean, come on, man, you know. It's... <laughs> think about that. So the next time you, you look at your woman and you think, what is going on with her? Check your pipes. See what you've been connected to lately. You, could, you should be connected to the Father. That's where this stuff flows from. People are coming up with all kinds of, they want to hear something, and I've seen it. I, I've gotten a little bit more straight in my answers over the years, and I realize people are not really interested in the answer. You ask me a question, I give you an answer, session's over with five minutes. Uh-uh. <laughs> they want me to, Stroke them and ease into it. Well, what do you feel? Well, what are you feeling now when she says that? 
Well, I don't know what she said. She said she just, she just said she hates you. How does that make you feel? <laughs> I, I already know the answer. Right, 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 right. The answer is you have no relationship with God. You have no relationship with the Word. So whatever's coming through your pipes and out your faucet is responsible for that response. This is headship. It's like, dude, God puts you in a position to receive from him so the woman can be a recipient from him through you so then she may now respond to you like she responds to God. Because God's not hurting her and God's not ignoring her and God talks to her and God values her. And so she responds to God and you tell her, you're supposed to respond to me like you do God. And she says, well, won't you start acting like God? <laughs> what I've realized is whether you're a male or a female, we are drawn towards people who meet our needs. Whether you're a male or a female, we're drawn towards people who meet our needs. Let's go to this, Christmas. Let's go to first, uh, first Peter, first Peter chapter three. Uh, let's look at that. Let's look at verse 10 first and then verse nine in the NLT. Let's, let's try that out. Well, let's stay there. Stay there in King James and then I'll go to NLT. So here's the deal. Here's what I, I really believe this. And and this is why I'm so glad I have an opportunity to teach on everything I've ever messed up on. And, and here's one of the big areas here, this area of doing things without Jesus. It's, it doesn't work, man. You know, without Jesus, nothing can be held together. Jesus is the glue for this institution that he created. Okay? Versus everything being held together through human effort. So either human effort, you're depending on human effort and performance to hold it together versus depending on Jesus to hold it together. I guess one of the most uh, surprising things, it's not surprising anymore, is that how is it that people who call themselves Christians lead society in the divorce rate? It's simple. You're calling yourself Christian, but you're not acting like one. There's no real relationship there. There's no relationship with his word, which means there's no relationship with him. You don't have a relationship with God if you don't have a relationship with his word. Okay? So what happens is you move from Jesus being the glue to cause this thing to work to I'm going to go ahead and try human efforts. And you start looking at talk shows. You start going to you know, worldly advice, and it, all, of, all worldly advice requires human effort. Now, I'm not saying that there is not a time where you have to put forth effort in doing stuff. I mean, we call it acting out on the Word. That's what we, we should be calling it. But you know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the human effort without Christ. I'm talking about human effort without His Word and with His wisdom. In other words, we kind of dismiss Christ out of the relationship and tried to create a whole new set of rules based in performance and self-effort, and it doesn't work. Have you not noticed by now when you do that, you find yourself back at the same place, and in some cases, it's a worse condition than it was before. Jesus has got to be a part of anything that's going to work in our lives. Um, this may not, you know, cause people to jump up in their chair and holler and scream, but because we live in a society where people don't believe in Jesus. <laughs> and they have all, a, lot, a lot of different reasons why they don't believe in Jesus. Well, I don't believe in Jesus because in the slavery days, the master used to use the word to keep people in slavery. That wasn't Jesus' fault. That was bad teaching. Amen. Amen. So likewise, some of the stuff we've learned about being married today, it's not Jesus' fault. It's bad teaching. Amen. And so now you got to decide Am I going to allow Jesus to be the third party in my marriage? Every successful marriage in the kingdom of God always has a third party. 
and that third party is Jesus. Uh, will I, those of you who are here, those of you at home, will you, I mean, will you allow Jesus to be the third party in your relationship? If, if, if he's not allowed to be the third party in your relationship, oh well, oh well. And, and, and people hear this, especially men. Yeah, I don't believe it take all that. Dude, if I could be a fly on the wall in a relationship where Jesus is not the third party. So it's easy to be fake and phony in public and, and on Instagram. Y'all look like y'all in love. I'm getting ready to take, you walking like this, I'm getting ready to take the picture. If Jesus is not the third party, you'll cuss each other out regularly. If Jesus is not the third party, you'll tiptoe around regularly. If Jesus is not the third party. But when you make him the third party to that relationship, there's some amazing things that happen that some of you don't even know about because you hadn't taken it seriously that Jesus is the third party of the relationship. You only see Jesus as, you know, when I do church, it's all right to have Jesus, but not when I do life. And that's the problem. We've learned how to do church, and we're doing that incorrectly, but we learn how to do church, but we don't know how to do life. And it's, it's about a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. It's not, it's not knowing how to do church. Oh, they clapping, I know how to clap. Oh, they dancing, I know how to dance. Oh, they jerking, ooh, I know what that, oh, let me go put on my war clothes. I know what that means. Thank you, Lord. No, no, no. It's not knowing how to do church. It's knowing how to do life. Why do I want to learn how to do church? And then when church is over with, I go home and I'm messed up. I'm stressed out. I'm depressed. I got all kinds of issues going on. And, and here's the here's a sad part about it. A professed Christian saying, I don't want to live. I've been there. And that's when somehow you dismiss Jesus because you don't think he applies to this situation only when I go to the building. Only when I do church do I need Jesus. No, you need Jesus. Now, every second, every minute, every hour, every day, every month, every year, every Christmas, every, you need Jesus. If you didn't need Jesus, he would have never been offered. He is our Savior, praise God. He is our way in. He is our way out. He is our joy. He is our peace. He is our strength. I need Jesus. There's never going to be a time that I don't need Jesus. I need him. You need him. Some of you don't know it, but you need him. Don't wanna, I don't want to hear that. You don't want to hear that. You want to hear the five reasons why the trigger causes you to act the way you act where your wife is concerned. I need to give you no five reasons. I can tell you why. No Jesus, he's not the third party. That leaves you by yourself trying to figure out something as you listen to fools instruct you along the way. Here's the deal. So you marry a man that's a billionaire and you, here's the deal, listen to him. You married a man, he's a billionaire and uh, you know, you stand, you know, y'all got five houses, two islands, and, um, you know, all that stuff. I mean, new things are exciting in the beginning. New things. You ever bought a brand new car? It was exciting in the beginning. A year later, and that note come in, you're like, man, I should have got something else. Just, uh. <laughs> you ever bought a house that caused you to hurt? Somebody know what I'm talking about. A house that caused you to hurt is every month when it's time to write that check out. <laughs> Maybe I'll not say that. Let me see. How do you say this? <sighs> Y'all ain't ready for that one. I got to keep it to myself. I've grown up. There are certain things I know not to say right now because I know you ain't ready yet. You, you sitting up there, oh, come on, say it, come on, say it. I say it, and I'm, I'm busy. I'm gonna... No preacher ought not be talking like that. And, you know, just I'll figure out how to say it as I go on. Uh, man, this is messed up, man. It's messed up how we've been tricked. 
and somehow we think we, we got it together. It's so messed up. Even as you listen to me now, talk about this Jesus and talk about this Word, it's so messed up, the lies that you have bought. You know what, when Taff was talking about a lying spirit, she was talking about deception. And the church is divided and deceived. And they have resigned themselves to worldly counsel, which is only going to lead to destruction. Yeah. And you sit up and we, we enjoy all the new stuff. I guess he wants to be kind. You enjoy all the new stuff and it's new and it's good and it's great and it's awesome and oh, look at me and oh, I'm, I, got, I got pearls and I got big rings and I'm, I'm, I'm just, look at me. I'm, 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 a, I'm a socialite, socialite. Check me out. And one day, here's the sad thing about it, because you think money can buy you everything. One day you wake up. I mean, everything's good. The sex is good. The money is good. The houses are good. The islands are good. The notoriety is good. All of that's good. But it has an expiration. Deep love, it just keep going. Deep love is lovely no matter where you at. Because when I fell in, grew in, love, whatever, I don't, you know, I remember we, were, we went to the country to preach and they put us in this motel. And it was one of them roachy motels. <laughs> and it had two beds. It didn't make me no different. Me and Taffy got on that one bed. It was like a presidential suite before it was over. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? It has an expiration date. If you don't believe me, look at Hollywood. They can't figure out how to stay married for nothing. It has an expiration date. Because you're trying to make something happen without the key component, Jesus. So it's only for a time. Smile, take Instagram pictures, do all of that stuff. But if he's not your third party, one day you'll be introducing us to the new Mrs. Somebody. And women, the way you can tell when a man decides, I don't want to be with you no more, and he says, I love you, but I'm not in love. And, and then she says, okay, I apologize, I'll do it. Nope, nope, we can't be together no more. Get ready. Quit asking him why and ask him this question. What's her name? Right. Or what's his name? <laughs> That's what happens. See, they ain't saying that, but it, it's got to be a drawing something somewhere else. He ain't looking at nothing else but where he going. That's cause of probably where he done been. Amen. Yeah. Right. What's her name? She go to our same church? <laughs> you in the tennis section, where she at? In the tennis section too? I'll be looking. What's her name? What's his name? And somebody fooled you into thinking that the grass is greener on the other side, and they forgot to tell you it was AstroTurf. <laughs> I just, I just want to walk because I feel I'm looking at your faces, and I just, I'm like, I'm honestly not trying to be this idiot. I'm just trying to say, here are the things I've heard in counseling sessions for almost 40 years. And I am so tired of tolerating these excuses for not having the key component into your marriages. It's not supposed to work without him. Well, I know these people, and they've been, they've been together for 50 years now. Sit down and talk to them about them 50 years. Sometimes they're so in bondage to people, they would rather live in misery with one another than to give the satisfaction of their failure to certain people, so they just tolerate it. Think about living with somebody you tolerate. How happy you think that that is? Getting up every morning, looking, if y'all sleep together still, looking over there like, I can't stand him. 
And every time he touched you, because you'd like nothing about his, all of the stuff he's done to you and has devalued you, has put you in a place where you like nothing about his spirit, soul, or body. And when he touches you, it just makes you just, ugh. And then he climb on top of you and you just, I got to fix something so he can get off me. I can't stand this joke and I'm got on my neck. He, but he got a lot of money. And y'all on one of the islands. And a man looking at the woman who used to be so awesome, so she was beautiful. Now, she hadn't changed a bit, but she was beautiful through your eyes. She was like the dream until she opened her mouth and showed you her attitude. And you thought you could deal with it because I got me a trophy wife, man. I got a trophy wife. I can parade around and let you see my trophy wife. Look at here, look at here, look at here. And then when you get home, you know, the attitude, that nasty attitude that she got, that every time she say something, you want to cut her. <laughs> but you can't because you don't want to go to jail. <laughs> but on pictures and in person, you think it's all good. It's not like that. Some people can look good in public, and it's like going home to hell. Yeah. And you Beelzebub, and she Satan, and then y'all swap roles every now and then. <laughs> See, nothing's going to change until you learn how to be honest with yourself. You remember when Taffy said, the problem is when a liar starts believing his own lies. You're still in deception because you won't let the necessary component be the third party. So, 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 10. Let me see verse 10 in the Amplified. Let's, let's look at the whole thing in the Amplified. Look at verse 10 in the Amplified. I want, you to, I want you to see this promise that God makes to married people. He says, for let him who wants to enjoy life. How many of you want to enjoy life? And see good days. How many of you want to see good days? He said, good whether apparent or not. He says, here's what you do. Keep his tongue free from evil and keep his lips from guile or treachery deceit. Guile is something that is it's cleverly, uh, a clever use of deception. It's um, one of the words for, synonyms for the word guile is duplicity. And, and duplicity is something like, uh, it's, it's deceitfulness in speech or deceitfulness in conduct um, as by speaking or by acting in different ways to different people concerning the same matter. In other words, it's double dealings, double dealings. It's an act of deceitfulness. He is saying that duplicity, guile, robs you of seeing good days. Who, who wants to do that? Who wants to get involved in the, in, the, in the craziness and the gal of social media and allow it to rob them of seeing good days. Look at verse 9. Back up to verse 9. Here it says, never return evil for evil. Don't return insults for insults, scolding, tongue lashing, berating, but on the contrary, blessing, praying for their welfare, happiness, and their protection and truly uh, uh, pitying and loving them, for know that to this you have been called, that you may yourselves inherit a blessing. And so I was like, oh, wow. So as married people and as husband and as a wife, I'm called to live like this, that I can inherit a blessing from God, that you may obtain a blessing as heirs, bringing welfare and happiness and protection. Go on to verse 10. And so verse 10 tells us what that blessing is by submitting to God and how we speak to people. And, and all he says, for let him who wants to enjoy life and see good days, that's the blessings, the blessings of enjoying life and seeing good days. He says, if you want to enjoy life and see good days, don't let your mouth speak evil and don't let it speak guile. 
Don't let it speak deception or lies, one verse says, one, one uh, in a translation says. I thought, wow, boy, your mouth can really cause you to miss out on some stuff. We hope your life has been enriched by today's message. The entire message series can be purchased at Creflo Dollar Ministries e-store. Visit us at store.cdmcanada.ca. Call us toll-free at 1-877-556-0668, or if it's more convenient, email us info at cdmcanada.ca.